you're very welcome um, down to Cronulla as well today. And finally, we also welcome um, Teresa Adler, um, who is one of the local um, elders. Um, she's a, a Gweagal woman who's going to now welcome us to country, and she's going to tell us um, a little bit about some of her recent um, journeys overseas. I've known Teresa for a long time. We went to World Youth Day together in 2005, and um, we often get together. Teresa um, normally lives down in, um, in Jarvis Bay. Um, she was in Canberra this morning and, and drove up this morning to be with us. So um, please, um, can, you, can you make Teresa welcome um, as she now welcomes us. So I invite you all to please be seated as um, Teresa speaks to us. Well, I'd like to say um, thank you. It's a great honour. Uh, to be here to speak today, and um, thank you, my dear friend, and uh, to also see my other sisters in that area, um, Indigenous people. Um, me and Lisa also go back a long time um, with the Catholic Education Office Sydney, and um, so she's a very dear friend, almost like family, actually. Um, I'll do, I do my work in the countries in my language. Uh, I speak several of um, Sydney languages and that of my bloodlines. So we'll, we'll, I'll do it in language first and then English. Bujuri, Kamaru, Gamarada, hello friends. Nan Bulul, Mulla Mulla, Girawal, Gadigul, Bidjigul, Wongul, Kamaragul, Ganangara, Eora, Nura, Baya, Darawal, Barambangatas. I am a proud descendant of my bloodlines, Gadigul. Girawal, Bidjigal, Wongal, Kemeragal, and Gadangara clans of the Eora Nation Sydney. And I speak to you in Darul language of my ancestors of this place. Ganundongala, Marambangatas, Nania Gamurua, I would firstly like to begin by paying my deepest respects to our elders, both past, present, and emerging, and to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, and especially to you all here today. Nureng Girawal, Nura, Eora Nura Galumban, Kumin. This place is Girawal country, where your parish is situated, and home to my fourth great grandfather, Chief Kumin. Chief Kumin was actually um, he was actually shot during the first encounter between Captain James Cook when they came ashore. And um, it was uh, quite interesting, actually, because um, I was told by my grandmother that they knew there was something coming on the wind and it was coming up the coast and they had spot fires. And um, when they came into Kamei, Botany Bay, they actually thought it was a big white bird coming in. And my grandfather and his brother, they was actually saying, woro woro, woro woro, which means go away. You know, um, this is this is bad coming in. So they never seen different coloured people before. So they actually thought they were um, ghosts, and in our language we call them gunjas. Nina Nindi, Dalgala Nara, Yanawari, Warana, Manawari, Yorubaya, Yugina. I hope you embrace, listen, and go away seeking further knowledge and stay passionate and speak with your friends about this beautiful mass that we're celebrating today for the, the end of NAIDOC week. Dijari Guru Nia, Wayanga Bamul Yalanga, thank you for embracing Mother Earth and welcome. I just arrived back in the country in Australia from 38 degrees summer and very cold, so it's, it's quite welcoming that I'm wearing my bud billy, which is my possum skin cloak. It's one of the um, first uh, possum skin cloaks that was made since, with a Sydney story since early 1900s. And um, my people wore possum skin cloaks because they were waterproof, but they also had a great symbolism on the back, and that was um, their totems, their story that connected with their bloodlines. And so when they walked across different countries, they knew that they would have um, safe passage into those different clans. And um, there was only one story on it, 
And so the mothers started with the possum skins, and then as the child got older, they added more to that particular story. And um, why possum skins? Um, because possum skins are waterproof, and um, kangaroo skins, they get soaking wet. So it was quite useful. And what my ancestors did, um, when, they, when they passed and left this life, they actually was wrapped up in their bud billy, uh, um, possum skin cloaks, um, that told a story about their life. And so it was a great um, journey for me to actually learn from my elders um, about the different, more modern technology in regards to kangaroo sinews for sewing and um, different ways of needles. So we used uh, like a wax sort of thread that means saddles, horse saddles, and um, a sailing needle because possum skin is very, very thick and it's hard to get through. And um, so from my bud belly, I made this to graduate with my Masters of Religious Education from the Australian Catholic University. And um, I sat there looking at all different cultures from all around the world, you know, um, that are part of Australia, made their home. And not one time did I see anyone representing my people, First Nations Australians. And I thought, I need to do something um, while I get up and do work in the countries to actually wear something that's a bit more regal to stand out that represents the First Nations people of this country. And um, so I, I made it and my beautiful um, Buriburi or Gawaras, we call them in language, our humpback whales, they are, um, they are the story on my, my cloak and that's where the sculptures came from to mark the 250 years um, since Cook and his crew came into Kamei Botany Bay and met with my Girawal clan and my fourth great-grandfather, Chief Kuman. So um, that's where my totems and that. My grandmother used to say, we come from the ocean, from our totems, our humpback whales, and they're our mujingals, which means our loved ones in language. And um, it's just our, our salty tears that remind us that we came from the ocean. And when we go, when we leave this life, we actually go back as humpback whales. And um, so when I came not long ago, uh, a couple of days ago <laughs> from Portugal, I spoke at the United Nations, uh, the Oce Oceans Conference, about um, you know, different indigenous communities around Australia and in regards to our humpback whales. So when there's deep sea mining, they, um, the sonars actually bust the whales and dolphins ears, so it's quite painful for them. So that's what we're trying to stop, deep sea mining, and also polluted waters that um, may interfere with our precious creatures that God created. And then, um, so that was a success. And when I, I was in, back home in Australia before that for two weeks. As before that, I was in Rome. And it was a great honour to speak for Laudato Sea Week and speak about um, caring for Mother Earth and the cry of Mother Earth with Laudato Sea. And the cry of Mother Earth for me was um, our particular PFAS in my community that 18 Aboriginal women in my community has now um, died from breast cancer. And um, so that's sort of our cry that we still look after our whales and hopefully our sea turtles so they don't become extinct. But also the highlight of being in Rome was to actually meet with Pope Francis himself. And um, I wanted to present him with the Uluru Statement and he received it um, with a big smile and a big heart. And um, I'll never forget how soft his hands were. And, um, and I also gave him a Francis um, cross with my, um, with my Aboriginal painting design on it. And it was a, it was a great honour that I'll always remember for the rest of my life to meet the Holy Father. And, uh, and I'd like to also thank you all and James. I call him James, not Father, because he's my mate. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, just to um, thank you for inviting me today, and it's a great honour to be here, and to also see my my sister Lisa and and everyone here that works with Lisa as well. So thank you very much. And uh, in my language, it's the Jari Guru Nia. So thank you. Thank you, Teresa. It's great having you here.